uh, what a start. What a start to the stream. <laughs> I'm very sorry we had a technical hiccup last muted. time. <laughs> yeah, and we've got a different one. Muted, um, I'm muted. Yeah. In Discord. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, Wait. Am I... Am I still muted? <laughs> Walking on stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Uh, professional start to that stream. I'm very sorry. Uh, we had some technical hiccups last time. We've had a technical hiccup this time, but uh, should now be running okay, I hope. Is it running okay now, I hope? Um, looks like it. Well, let's start again from the top. Uh, welcome back to the virtual Nacon studio, technical hiccups and all. Uh, I'm Miss Tree here again with two giants of the Bud Bowl 3 community to take you through the draw for the knockout stage of the 2024 World Championship. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's only three weeks ago that we got together to do the draw for the group stage. Since then, we've had an incredible 98 games of Blood Bowl and one man has streamed all of them. Uh, Jimmy, fantastic. How on earth are you still uh, alive at this point? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's been tough. There's been a hell of a lot of games. It's been really tricky to like fit everything in, you know, like with the replays and the live games. And then there was the great game between Tree and Strider because at the same time as Jay Lee. Oh, we don't want to talk Pibot, about that one. <laughs> So I would have liked to have done those both at the same time, but it wasn't really possible. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty good. It's a lot of work, but uh, great stuff. Fantastic tournament so far. Also with us today we have Vitok from Nacon. Vitok, I know you've just been moving home. How many of the ninety eight games have you managed to watch in the last uh, week or three weeks? Sorry. I don't know if Vitor can hear me. Yeah, to, there's a to, big to delay. You, Tria. Sorry, I'm hearing you a bit uh, a bit late because I can hear you on the stream, but on Discord you're still muted, so I... I, we can hear you, but with delay. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. That's so can, weird. Can okay, you. I'm very sorry. I don't know what's caused that. No we're having <laughs> we're having a very great technical start to this stream. I'm so sorry. Uh, I think we're all set now. <laughs> um, sorry, Vitok, I interrupt you. No, no problem, no problem. I, I think uh, if I, because I was also catching, uh, catching up, sorry, with the delay, so I think we, you were asking mm -hmm. me how much of the game I, I could watch. Or, yeah. I really try to, to watch uh, a lot of them, actually, being uh, moving to, to North America actually allows me to, to see the game you, you guys are playing in the evening uh, during the afternoons. So I always have a, a screen, sorry, open with, uh, with Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's stream there, so I can, I can check what's happening on, on feed, and it, uh, it has been amazing to see. We've had quite an eventful uh, 98 games, I'd say, and it's been genuinely like an incredible effort from you, Jimmy. I think all of us are in awe that you've managed to, to marathon through it all. Um, we've had some groups go down to the final game, like you just mentioned. We've had some groups that required a tiebreaker. We've had some shocks and upsets. We've had some incredible plays. We've had some plays that I think maybe uh, not what you would have done, Jim. <laughs> um, what have been your highlights so far? Well, that's a good question. I think Spartacus made a really good one turn. I think that was the, that's been the play of the tournament so far. It was very unlikely; he had no re rolls, but he spotted it all and executed it perfectly. I'd say that was probably the the highlight, along with, of course, the the fantastic Imperial ability mirror for the, <laughs> that we had today to wrap everything up. So that was that was a very fun one. A group of three Imperial ability teams, and then we thought we hadn't had enough Imperial ability mirrors, so we we got one more. Um, what have been the big surprises for you, Jim? Because I remember at the beginning you were talking about specifically lizard men, maybe that you felt everyone should be on lizard men. And if I've got the numbers right, I think only two out of eight of the lizard men team have made it through to the knockout stages. What what have been the surprises for you, and is that one of them? Well, yes and no. They, they, they were a bit unlucky, right? One had to play you and Strider, then three Lizards were in the same group, thus guaranteeing them to not go through and stuff. So I still think Lizards are very strong in the format. I think the biggest surprise was Diomlord finishing bottom of his group, which was unbelievable. Uh, how tight the group was with Mr. Page. <laughs> Mr. Page's incredible group with Diamond. Everybody finished on four points, a win, a loss, and a draw. And uh, also... Uh, Mr. Page only made three casualties with seven mighty blow. 
I didn't know that. That's extraordinary. Um, and, and he had a huge win over Diamond as well. So as you say, really, really tight group. Um, I guess we're now all turning our minds on to the next bit. Uh, Vitok, can you talk us through what the format is for this knockout stage? Yes, absolutely. Uh, for this knockout stage, uh, we wanted to make it, uh, well, easier to follow, yet uh, more interesting to play. So it's uh, unlike uh, the season final we did, it's a single uh, elimination tree. So meaning there is no like winner and loser bracket, everything is happening in a, in a classic tree, I would say. But uh, the matches are not just best of one, they are what I call uh, two matches plus, plus tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the coaches will play first two matches without overtime activated. And in case of they do draw in first match and draw in th on second match, or if one is winning uh, uh, the first match and the second coach is winning the second match, then you will have a decisive third match tiebreaker with overtime activated if needed. And that uh, that could that will probably like guarantee big uh, big moment of tension for the for the coaches, I guess. I think what's exciting about that as well is it it creates a dynamic that you don't always see, which is if you've lost your first game. You have to play for the winning game too. You can't play for the draw. And we did see that at the end of some of the group stages, which uh, I, well, I caught myself on the wrong side of it, perhaps. But I think it still makes for great uh, drama for watching. Um, Jim, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to th say on that format. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's an incredible format. Yeah, and I, I also found myself having to win my third game and <laughs> after drawing. So, like, you know, it's kind of the same thing. You know, it, it's good that you can, like, you can just draw as well and, you know, like, you know, you're not eliminated and stuff. I think it, I think it's a great format. The the best two or three. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. And yeah. it's probably something I wanted to to bring from what I see in the tabletop tournaments as well that exist. You know, when you mm -hmm. have like team team uh, competition where sometimes you play for the draw, right? You're not playing for the win. Your team mm -hmm. only needs the draw, and you play for the draw. So actually, it can it kind of create this di dynamic? If you won the first match, you just need a draw on the second one to pass, right? So you will be playing for the draw, but is it a risk when your opponent absolutely need a win? You know, this kind of dynamic, I think, really adds something to the to the overall uh, confrontation. I am so on board, and I think it's time, Vitok, for you to start spinning the wheel for us. Uh, are you ready to, to show us the wheel if we uh, switch over to wheel cam now? Um, do you want to explain exactly how this is going to look? Because, you know, you've got two separate wheels, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so we will be uh, be able to start this draw. So there is two separate wheels. In the first one, we have only uh, the coaches that finished first of their group. And in the second wheel, you have only the coach that finished second of their group. So we'll, we will uh, uh, draw each time. So a first of the group and a second of the group. That will be the first match, you know, at the very top of the tree. And we will go down the tree with each of the confrontation there that we will be uh, that we will be drawing. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm ready to ready to 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 start for the with the first one then. So just to to clarify that, so yeah, group winners coming in uh, in this first spin, and then the second wheel we'll go to, which will be the runners up from the group. So our first group winner and the first name out of the hat is Winteros. Jimmy, how was Winteros's group stage? He won every single game, so Blimey. that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, Dark Elves, I think, I mean, I, I obviously chose Dark Elves. I think Dark Elves are quite good in this format where you have to not lose. <laughs> and looking at this second, the runners up wheel, Jimmy, I know there's a few people in here who you think are the ones who the group winners are going to most want to avoid. <laughs> yeah, well, at the, at the risk of sounding big headed, I, and you know, I think myself and Andy mm -hmm. and uh, also Diamed, I think maybe Diamed, you know, it's it, he's maybe the favourite for the whole thing, and it's kind of wild that he's in the losers group. So, well, not losers, runners up group. So that's going to be, um, yeah, that's people want to avoid him for sure. Well, Wenteros has avoided those names. They've got Zahi, so we have Dark Elves on Skaven. Quite a lot of Edge got through in general. I think seven of the eight Wood Elf teams got through, and six Dark Elf teams. Is that right, Jimmy? Uh, Four out of six Dark Elves and okay. six out of seven Wood Elves. There you go. So, and how many Skaven was it? Four out of five. Four out of five. So Skaven also very successful. So yeah, Dark Elves against Skaven will be a fun first matchup. Uh, I don't know who that favours, actually. I suppose the Skaven have the stronger one turn, but it's going to come down to uh, how well the, the Dark Elves can manage their drives and their defence, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think Dark Elves are favoured like over the course of play. It's just a lot of it is going to come down to if the Skaven get that one turn or not. And how was Zahi's group? Zahi, I see, has just shown up in chat. I don't know if you remember how they finished. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I don't know. The second places were, were oh, he lost to Olivier Dulac, yeah. So oh, he, wow. he did win his other two games, but then faced Olivier. <laughs> Um, Vitok, I think probably we're going to need you to keep spinning the wheel even as we chat just because otherwise this will end up taking really long um, so yeah we're back to the uh, winner's side of the uh, groups here I think um, or are we? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. back to the winner, winners uh, mm -hmm. with the, the first draw of the second match surveillance another, another Skaven on Skaven Jim, feel yeah, free to he, jump in without me asking when you see the name. <laughs> he also won all three games and also had Skaven. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, lots of lots of Skaven. Winning three back. out of three is pretty impressive in any group here. Like, the, the groups were all strong. Yeah, 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 really good. Re really good. And uh, oh. particularly the second place was Sergal, so. Oh, very good then. Oh, and Shambling Undead. So very punchy team for the Skaven to deal with. This feels like it comes down to removals a lot. Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, Matt Ablitos was also in a group with somebody who won every game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, Undead, always strong, aren't they? Mm. Although, again, Undead a bit like uh, the Lizard Men, perhaps underperformed a little bit in the groups to what we expected. Maybe. I mean, they can't all perform well, can That's they? True. So I think, I think uh, you know, in the 64, some people, the people who thought they were the best, I think, went with the elves. And, and I think the other people went, like, you know, with team to give them the chance to uh you know what removals is a really good way to win so we have frankie on more undead we're getting all the skaven and the undead out of the box early yeah he got a, he got a very lucky group with two imperial nobility in so <laughs> <laughs> almost by default he uh, he won that group <laughs> well let's see if he has if he has luck, then for the it's for possible well. could play an ability again, which would be the funniest outcome. Uh, they've got slayed back black magic on humans, so not an ability, but they're doing an all human team run to the, the through their tournament. Yeah, that's that's pretty lucky for, for Frankie and Slade. Uh, Slade actually finished third in his group, but Gabby has pulled out, um, so his his you know the slot deferred to slade mm -hmm. um who did win the head-to-head -head versus ceremony how uh how does one arrange for the second place team to to drop out just asking for a friend <laughs> yeah. yeah that's handy isn't it <laughs> i'm only teasing because i finished third in my group for anyone who doesn't get that joke it's because i finished third in my group um and that's the person who finished first in my group, Strider, who uh, also was a three out of three winner. Um, so I I know exactly how good Strider is. He also might just be the person who won the season finals, which was the predecessor to this tournament in January. Yep, incredible. Everyone else on the group ended on the same points, didn't they? It was him on nine, everyone else on three. So, yeah. Big, big name there. And uh, will it be one of the big names in pot? Oh! <gasps> Oh, no, this, this is a redraw, redraw because Jalev was the second place in our group, so they can't play each other again. Exactly. Yeah. When I when I will draw the same uh, the same group, then I will just close, not remove not remove the name, sorry, mm -hmm. and redraw it. Bring that to a draw for me. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you still have a chance to <laughs> draw again, but no, it will not be the case. <laughs> Lizards for Dragu. That's probably a tough matchup for Dragu on races as well as on playing Strider. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 see, I, now I did say everybody should have gone. Well, not everyone. Most people should have gone lizards. The lizards do have a bad matchup, a bad matchup versus what else? But have a good matchup versus everybody else. So yeah, that was pretty unlucky for him. If I remember well, uh, Strider won the season final with Lizard as well. So I guess yeah. he knows it very well. Do you want to take a look? Yes. The... Should we take a look at the bracket? How it's shaping up so far? We can do a little uh, mid. Uh, oh, that's not currently got the bracket on. Um, need to, uh, yeah, it yep. There it is. That is the bracket so far. So we have Wenteros versus Zahu, Surveillance versus Matabolitos, Frankie versus Laidback Magic, and Strider versus Dragu. And as you can see on the bracket, this draw goes all the way through to the final. Uh, so yes, we know not only that first matchup, but we know that the winner, for instance, of Wentros Sahu and the winner of Surveillance against Matapolitos will play each other. That's the top quarter of the draw, Jim. Mm, very exciting. Yep, that looks that looks really nice for Strider, I think. I think he's going to fancy his chances of getting to the uh, semi-finals there. 
Although, as you say, other people in that group who've won all their games so far in this tournament, so uh, not not True. to be taken lightly. No, no, I mean, everyone's good at this stage, of course. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's coming from the same man that's, that announced that everybody should have played Lizard, so maybe, <laughs> maybe there could be some surprise. <laughs> oh, of course. Okay. Anything can happen in Blood Bowl. We had, we had, we had Dion Lord finish bottom of his group, so, mm. yeah. Anything can happen. And Are we back to the draw? Yeah, let's go back to the wheel. We are. So, uh, so yeah, uh, during the, the, the first of the next match, then, Rock on Orcs. It's funny, see, like, I think the agility teams were better for the group stage because they can get wins when they need them. Hmm. But uh, in this, in, in the knockouts, like, the, the bash teams are a bit better because they can get a draw and, you know, and they, in overtime they'll have more players. So I do think the bash teams, while a bit harder to qualify, will do a bit better in the knockouts. And it's going to be an Orc mirror, I think. Wow. So... At least one Orc team is going through to the uh, last 16. Do my very basic <laughs> mental arithmetic. <laughs> Don't ask me to do maths any harder than that on stream, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so qualified out of uh, KFOG's uh, group. They all finished on one win and two draws, I think, the, the, the top three. So you have to mm. uh, just squeak through. Are those, those aren't the only two Orc teams, are they? No, there's others, yeah. More undead. I'm starting to feel like we're going to have to have a big run of wood elves at some point. So we're going to see some <laughs> wood elf mirrors because we've still got seven of them to come out the draw. But for now, we've got Nuru on Chambling Undead. Yeah, Nuru is the only bash team to win every game. So Nuru wasn't messing around in the group stage. Stops on Spartacus for Lizards. It's a rough draw for him. Lizards are very strong into Orcs, I think. And uh, Spartacus did get a big win over Mad Jake in their critical final match to see who qualified. Am I going mad? Wasn't Nuru un undead, or am I imagining that? Was that a second? Uh, Nuru was undead, yeah. It was a second ago, okay. Wasn't... Oh, yeah, did I say Orcs? <laughs> yes, you just said Orcs. <laughs> it's because yeah. of the Orcs. So we just had the Orcs. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Nuru, yeah. Well, it's still, still tougher than undead, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough for bash team. That, that's why I thought, you know, mm. I thought it was good. Uh oh. Bright on Necromantic. Definitely one of the. I don't know. I don't know how to put it in Blood Bowl because uh, I start thinking that's a big name because I recognise it. I don't know if big name is the appropriate way of defining them, but Bright is certainly one of the people who I think before the tournament we were looking at and saying very strong contender. Very strong contender is good, yeah. <laughs> And here they are, the people's favourites. I have no doubt. I have no doubt this is the team that everyone is cheering for. You know, the neutrals at home. Andre on the Imperial Nibet. Yeah, he just won a he just won a, the uh the play in uh tiebreaker today. And uh yeah, wow, that's that's not gonna be easy for him. But <laughs> funnily enough, I um, I think they're one of the better teams against Necromantic because they've got Stan Firm to not get surfed and they've got Fen to mess with the Wolves as well. So I think mm -hmm. they've got a couple of a couple of problems for Necro. But yeah. I actually really agree with that. I think they're, it's an awkward matchup and the guard is kind of similar, the strength is similar. Um, maybe one of the best ones in ability to get. Um, Schurpils on Skaven. Yep, another 3-0. and uh, Bossed his group easily. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see who he gets have we not seen a single wood elf team in the top half of the draw <laughs> it doesn't feel like it just strider isn't it? Just a strider of course strider, yeah, yeah strider yeah but quite a few remaining mm. and here's the other fan favorite imperial nobility ratama <laughs> mm. and at least he's got stun firm for the one turn except of course there is the rat ogre so Stand firm doesn't really stop the one turn <laughs> unless you unless his unless his ogre can kill the uh um... oh, I don't think Ratamo has an ogre. Yeah, Ratamo didn't go with an ogre. Oh, okay. So, hmm. 
So, so for those who really enjoy those Imperial Nobility Mara matchup, we could have one on the next. Uh, yeah. the next I was just thinking it's time to see the bracket again, isn't it? But maybe we uh, <laughs> yeah. we could preview that possibility. Um, oh, there we go. There uh, so that is now the second quarter of the draw done. Rock versus Jasek, Nuru versus Spartacus, Bright versus Andri, and Jurpils versus Ratamo. So we have a strong possibility, some would say almost a certainty, Jim, of another nobility mirror in the second round. <laughs> there is a possibility, but uh, I, I definitely wouldn't bet on Imperial Nobility, but you know, anything can happen. You know, they, they've both, funnily enough, got things where they can do things against them. Um, so yeah, it, it's, but yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to bet on Imperial Ability to win a game. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so we know I've like all of the of the three ready. Meaning, like one of these names is going to make it to the final. Who will it be for you? That's a great question, Jimmy. What do you think? Um, I think Strider or Bright, and uh, I think Bright is fancied in that matchup. I, I think Necro are favoured versus Wood Elves. It's funny because Andy Devo thinks Wood, thinks, uh, Wood Elves are favoured versus Necro, but I think Necro are favoured in that. Um, I don't know, maybe... Oh, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. I'm, I'm going to go with Strider. I, do you know that I think, I, I think it's a really fascinating matchup, the Necromantic against Wood Elves one. It's one that I feel like I've played a lot on the tabletop this last year. Um, and I agree with you. I think it is tough for the wood for the wood elves and it's actually a, a strider has got such a good one turn that that will be taken away from him uh, in that game if that game happens but i'm with you I, I just can't bet against the person who won it all last time and who i've played and who i think is really good so uh, uh i'm certain it could be anyone on this side of the draw but my pick is going to be strider as well so yeah, let's so go we'll back to the wheel. To, we'll be able to, yeah, we'll be able to talk about it uh, uh, when we'll be live in the studio then to see if, if your prediction were correct. Yeah, <laughs> so we've got these... So bright bright mm -hmm. versus Strider for the semi-final, that's what you call. It's, it's, <laughs> what's, what's, what's not very reasonable here is that we haven't got Andy here, so he doesn't have to um, live by any predictions that's that he true. makes. Maybe we have to make him make those <laughs> off screen. <laughs> <laughs> so third quarter of the draw let's go there's a lot of wood elves on this screen so they've got to hit sooner or later not not late not sooner though it's going to be later nabolo nabolo is run has been unbelievable he's won every game he scored 10 touchdowns in three games and he's made 13 casualties <laughs> okay. um, well i think i've got my prediction for who's going to win the whole thing then <laughs> very tough mm. round though wow yeah wow wow what a match that is that is unbelievable Diamed was my pre-tournament favourite and he's got um, stand firm to maybe stop the one turn mm. but has to kind of get rid of the rat ogre for, for that to work just going to point out, Jim, that before the tournament started, you named three people in the second, uh, in the runners up, who were the, you thought the strongest ones. They're all on this half of the bracket because none yeah, of them have I'm come not, out. I'm, yet. Not, <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm not going to lie. This, I think this, this half for me, this is the bit more dangerous half. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm unhappy <laughs> from a personal level of my chances. Jonesy on Dark Elves. Yeah, he uh, he squeaked through the Mr. Page Diamond group, and uh, he actually is top of the NAF ladder, you know, that we've got in Blood Bowl 3 for, like, the practicing for the World Cup and stuff, so he's obviously been putting the practice in for the Dark Elves and uh, paying off. It's been great seeing people use that ladder and practice in it and come through. He's not the only one, is he? It's really cool to see. Yep. And Shambling Undead, which means still all these wood elves are in the draw yeah alan he would he wouldn't he won a game versus the Lord that was like a critical last round game and if the Lord had won the Lord would have been in but instead because alan won alan's through and the Lord finished bottom of the group unbelievably wow so close so many of these groups And there's another of the big pre-tournament favourites, maybe Kayfogt. I know you have often said, Jimmy, that you think he might be the best player in the world. 
Yep, yep, he's my favourite. I, he is unbeaten at the moment. He won one, drew two. That that was enough to get him top group. He's on touchdown score. Funnily enough, there were three people that won one, drew two in that group. And uh, he won the group on touchdown score. And I'm really hoping I'm not playing him. <laughs> as he is your favourite, I reckon to, to make, try my best, you know, so, so your name comes up there. There's, Thanks. there's six names on this wheel. You've got a one in six chance, You're Jimmy. Like but it's not you. Ooh. It's Circle on Orcs. This is this is really interesting because Circle went all block. He's got no guard at all on mm -hmm. Orcs. I guess he predicted the agility team meta, and now he's got lots of block. He can really we can really go after those like you know nine dodge elves. Has he got sure hands? Because not all Orc builds did, did they? Most of them did, but not all. He has a block thrower. Okay. <laughs> They just block everything. <laughs> yeah, really important in that matchup to have the sure hands, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, massively. And Niagara on Wood Elves is finally our second Wood Elf team drawn. I've not I've just said Kofo, of course not our second Wood Elf team drawn. Second in a row. Yeah, yeah, he's uh he's good. He he got through oh he got through the Allen and the Onlord group, so yeah. Fair play. There's not many names left on these wheels now. No. Ivan Colin on Orcs. Mm. Yeah, I seem to remember something about this. <laughs> oh yeah, he won his first two games and then his final game was versus Bright was to decide who won. And uh, he had to win, and it, you know he ended up losing. But uh, I think so. Yeah, bright, bright through. Oh no, they drew. They drew. Yeah, that's right. They drew that game, but bright. You know, bright won the group on touchdown scored. So two before, back to back Wood Elf versus Orc, mate, Orc games. Before we draw the the last four games, do you want to take a absolutely a look at yes, the, please. The so we have the third quarter of the draw, and it is Nabolo versus Diomed. Jonesy versus Allen, K Fog versus Circle, and Niagara versus Ivan Colin. What's your uh, pick in this quarter of the draw, Jim? Well, I think I think you know I've said it since the start, Diamed and uh, K Fog, and I still I guess stand by those. That's that you know that, that's a potential quarter final, isn't it? Potential, but yeah, Nabolo's was unbelievable. So if he keeps rolling like that, <laughs> Diamed had better watch out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Nabolo now that I've said that, but I'm not the one who needs to, need to, needs to do predictions. I'm just hosting. You and Andy can do the predictions. Um, so time for the final section of the draw. And uh, I just need to point out, by the way, that we now have both Andy and Jimmy in the final quarter of the draw. So whatever happens... They can't both be in the final eight, unfortunately. So and, and Olivia Dulac, the number one ranked NAF player in the world. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it is a meaty final quarter of the draw coming up. Let's see who winds up with who in round one. It's it's a very good news for me, though, because I know I will have one of the caster live for the <laughs> final. You know, they won't be playing each other. <laughs> So it is Trouk on Shumbling Undead who comes out first in this final quarter. Yeah, in my group he drew me. Uh, he, we we well we drew our game when I made two dodges with the ball and snaked them both. <laughs> so <laughs> I was maybe a tiny bit unlucky to uh, draw that game, and I can't draw him now, can I? In this, you can't so... play him now, but Andy can. Andy Davo on Necromantic into the Trouk Undead. It is an all undead matchup with the two different flavors. Um, yeah. How do you see that matchup? I think Andy's favored, but it's a bash game. And, you know, it's, he is vulnerable with two wolves and a ghoul. He's only got three players that can handle the ball. Mm. If uh, if those, you know, get injured from mummy blitzers, then he could be in a lot of trouble. It feels like it really comes down to how hard the mummies hit that matchup, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mummies are great. They're incredible players, but they're fighting against four guard. It's it's it, it can be a struggle. And you know, if the claws hit the mummies, it's it's really really bad. <laughs> Trouk in chat. Poor Trouk started his tournament <laughs> against one of the two uh, casters, and now has the other one uh, 
good luck Trouk uh, and good luck Andy as well and let's uh, let's see the next one yeah I was just checking uh, checking if we have uh, not possibility of redrawing in the last ones oh yes make sure we don't get two people who uh, play each other well Jaleb definitely can't play Strider because Strider's gone is anyone I know <laughs> yeah, so I, I think we're fine actually uh, yeah. uh, there, will, there won't be any, any situation of Okay, so let's go with the next match. Mm -hmm. It's Gorgo Bay, which I'm pretty sure is uh, Dark Elves. Yes, yeah, he uh, he qualified via the Imperial Mobility Group. Uh, he got to play three Imperial Mobility and cruise his way through. <laughs> he won this first two. He did actually lose the, the third game, but... Um, well, will not be Imperial Nobility here. It will be Wood Elves, Dark Elves, or Old World Alliance. It's Jimmy Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's that guy like? Oh, he's fantastic. He's probably the best player in the whole tournament, honestly. I've never <laughs> seen this guy play badly. He's never made any mistakes, especially with surfing. So, yeah. <laughs> Dark Elf um, Mirror. Dark Elf Mirror for the... Um, First elf mirror so far, I think. Oh, we might get another Feels one in a like second. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, two French player left there. Mm -hmm. Olivier Dulac. We there. have. Is it three wood elves and an old world alliance, or is it? I can't remember what the other. Well, we'll find out in a second. The Marseillais is up with wood elves. Yeah, he won Andy Davos group, I mm -hmm. believe, and. Uh... Yeah, that because Andy slipped up versus the chaos he drew. Like that's the problem with the bash teams in the in the group stage is that those those slip ups where you can't play your way out of them and you can't dice your way out of them and stuff. Like, you know, what else could just roll a few two pluses, right? But when when it's just when, that uh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> when bash teams, they I think bash teams are just going to draw more than than you know what than what else are. So I think it was a bit harder to qualify for those, um, but now not held back by those draws. And it is going to be the Wood Elf Mirror, Serafino on Wood Elves. Uh, we've been waiting all this time to see all the Wood Elves and they're all coming out together. Another really good player, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I know that because you told me. You said uh, Serafino's a tabletop player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Serafino. very strong tabletop player, as is the last name coming out here in the number ones. Olivier <laughs> Dulac, the number one, as you mentioned, ranked uh, Blood Bowl tabletop player in the whole world. Uh, Ranked number one for Riskaven, but has been kicking bum with Wood Elves here. And he will play against Jalev, who uh, is on the OWA. And I I personally think this is not as as great a matchup for Wood Elves as perhaps you thought it was, Jim. I think uh, I'm using that as my uh, reason for going out. Uh, we'll see, though, what it looks like when it's uh, Olivier Dulac. These two played each other well, they didn't play each other directly, but they played each other as teams against each other at the Euro Bowl tabletop competition this summer when France ever so narrowly beat Team USA on the top table, wound up beating Team USA into first place by, I think it was a drawn round was a difference between them in the end. Uh, so uh, a renewal of rivalries from the tabletop this summer between those two. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, Jay Leave did great, you know, didn't he? With all the lines, he managed to win a game in the in the group stage, which was a fantastic success for all the lines. And somehow it conspired that one win and two losses went through in second place. So uh, great, great for him, and uh, and maybe not such a great draw, Olivier to lack with what else. <laughs> He's pretty good, ready Olivier. To, ready to show you the, the yes. old stream? Let's look at the final part of the bracket. Trauk versus Andy Davo, Gorgo Bay versus Jimmy Fantastic. So we could see Andy versus Jimmy in round two. It's the only time we could see them play each other. So that's um, on the cards, possibly. La Marcia Serafino and Olivier Dulac versus Jalev. Olivier Dulac could end up playing Wood Elf Mirror into Wood Elf Mirror if he goes, well, will if he goes through. Uh, or similarly, Jalev, if he goes through, will play Wood Elves and Wood Elves again. So definitely all the elves stacked at the bottom end of the draw. Um, going to be fascinating to see how that plays out. Yeah, incredible that, isn't it? It's funny, funny enough, you know, I'm, I, I know I was rubbishing all world lines a little bit, but the thing is, at least versus what else, they're still just a bash team, right? Mm -hmm. So they could, they've could they got that angle of, I think, versus other 
we, we saw it in the competition, right? Versus the other Bash team, the Lizards, they look terrible and nearly lost 3-1. Yeah. But versus the Elves, at least they've got that dynamic of Bash versus agility. So they, they can win that for sure, yeah. I was, I think, when I played against those exact OWA, I think I was on eight players from turn three. So yes, they definitely can do some damage pretty quickly if they uh, get that role going. Um, the uh, That's the full draw. We picked our favourites from the top half of the draw. Jimmy, who have you got in the bottom half of the draw? And let's just assume that your number one favourite is Jimmy Fantastic. But who else might be your favourites <laughs> after Jimmy? Oh, it's tough, isn't it? I mean, looking at this, we've got K-Fog and Diamed and got to pick one of those. And then out of the others, oh, I'm going to be I'm going to be not so big headed. And let's put Andy Devo through versus Olivia Dula. <gasps> And then let's put Andy Devo and Diamed. Yeah, Andy Devo or Diamed through my semis. It's it's such a, a competitive tournament, and I look at it and think I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Andy on Necromantic. I think he plays them so so well, but I also don't think it's inconceivable that they can lose to Undead even in round one. And that's I think really speaks to what this tournament is like. I do think this format, like we talked about at the beginning where it's two games instead of one, maybe um, reduces the risk of you just having that game where you get banged out a little bit, maybe, Jimmy. Yeah, and also uh, KFOG made a really good point that like it's really hard to try to win versus Wood Elves. <laughs> and I didn't really think about that, but yeah, so if, if, you know, if he just plays the first game and gets a draw, like how do you try and beat Wood Elves? They're just going to two-turn like or three-turn or whatever. So I kind of regretted not taking Wood Elves in that regard, but um, with a Bash Mirror, that's going to be a bit different for Andy. So you'd imagine over three, you know, two or three games, you'd imagine he would get the best of truth. But anything can happen. Anything can happen. That's the beauty of football, isn't it? And Vitok, could you tell us how long the players have to play this first round? So what's the time frame for this first round and then and then the rounds from then on? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so for this first round or the second mm -hmm. one also, they have one week for each of them. So they have one week from now on one week then uh, after that to play the first round. And then for the quarter, semi and final, they will be all played over the weekend from the 6th, like Friday 6th to Sunday the 8th of December, having uh, uh, basically two games live uh, 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 broadcasted from the studio with you uh, uh, on the Friday uh, end of the afternoon, evening and then the two semi on the Saturday and on the Sunday, the third place match, uh, followed by the grand final, obviously, to have a world champion. So we thought it was intense with 98 games in three weeks. There's going to be a huge number of games, depending how many go to game three, just in the next week alone. I've seen in chat that Jaylev and Olivier Dulac are already scheming to maybe play a game as soon as this evening. So, Jimmy, I hope you're ready if you're planning to keep up the uh, casting every single game. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh... that, that the thing I, I, I would add also is like we for the first two rounds especially we 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 give the the freedom uh, of for player let's say to organize themselves do they want to play the three game in a row if they have the chance to do it or do they prefer to have like three separate time in the week that their choice they can organize around that but obviously when we come to quarter semi and finals they will have to play them in a row so they're in the kind of uh, like it's kind of a of, a, of, of test, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, to remain focused for three games. If it's a, a very tight series, that will be that will be challenging for them. I think that's a really great point, and I think there's like there's so much that goes into Blood Bowl. There's the psychology of it, and I think when you've just played a game, and whether you people go on tilt and lose their composure a little bit, that's part of it. And I think physical tiredness is a part of it. It's um, a thing that I think you definitely see in tabletop tournaments. Players get tired, they make mistakes, and and that's complicated when you start talking about a world championship with time zones and people have to plan with people who aren't necessarily on their ideal playing time. All of that stuff is super, super fascinating. I have to say genuinely, while I'm sad I didn't make it through to the next round, it's really exciting not being in the next round and just being able to go, oh, I can look forward to watching all this great blood ball. I think it's a really going to be a fun uh, competition from as we go through these knockout stages. I, um, I don't know if there's anything else people want to chip in here before we wrap things up. Uh, Vitok, was there anything else you wanted to say about the uh, remainder of this tournament or, or what comes next? Is there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I just want to add that I'm, uh, I'm quite amazed actually by 
uh, the, the the commitment, the fair play. I'm saying from all the players also in the tournament. Not that it is a, it, that it is a surprise, but it's always a very good news, right? To see a very good spirit there. Uh, we see it as well uh, through the the people that watch the game and so on. So the, the the support there is incredible so far, and I'm really looking forward for the for the the most important matches coming. Definitely, Jimmy. You've said who you think is going to win the whole thing, but now you've got this full draw in front of you. And again, not your game. Which of these games is the one game that you've got circled as you're most excited to watch? Oh, that's a that's a good question, isn't it? Um, I think it is Bright. Well, see, Bright versus Andre on names, but Andre's got <laughs> imperial ability, hasn't he? <laughs> so, so uh... what's this? That's the one that the crowd most want, Jimmy. I think this is <laughs> Nabolo Diamond. Nabolo Diamond. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I mean, that's it. I mean, Bright Bright Andre could be good as well. Yeah, but um, I think I think yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with. Yeah, the ball of diamond. Let's see if he can keep up his incredible run uh, against maximum resistance. <laughs> I'm I'm going to put one in for myself. I think genuinely the last one out is I'm one I'm super excited to see. Uh, J Love has been really coming on and and getting into Team America and uh, and kicking bum with them at the uh, Euro Bowl this summer. And Olivier, who is the number one in the world, Olivier is always fantastic to watch. If you like watching Wood Elves, such an aggressive coach, really really enjoyable to play, to to see play. So. That's the one I've got circled. But all of these 16 games are going to be amazing, I'm sure. Um, once again, you can see them all on twitch.tv slash Jimmy Fantastic. He's streaming every single one of them. Um, and uh, maybe that we'll try and help him out a bit more in these knockout stages as well. So he's not always doing them on his own. But it's been <laughs> tough to keep Thanks. up with how many games there are played. Um, so I think, that's, I think that's it from us for now. Uh, Jimmy's channel is the place to keep up with things through the knockout stage as I said and then come back to this channel right here for the final eight coming up uh, the first full weekend of December cannot wait to get together with everyone in uh, the uh, real life studio not this virtual studio and do this thing for real but for now uh, thank you all for tuning in sorry for the technical problems at the start we won't have that when we're in a studio together and good luck with all of your matches <laughs>